The bottom of this box is going to be half inch plywood and you could probably get away with doing something a little bit thinner like quarter inch maybe even an eighth inch masonite but since this is going to be cantilevered off the wall it's going to be it fits in a nook so it'll be anchored to part of two walls and then the entire back it won't have legs so I shouldn't have a problem but that's why I opted to go with a thicker bottom piece just to give it a little bit more structure. So it's going to be 30 inches wide, so I'm going to cut this at 31 to give me a little bit of breathing room and to be able to trim it flush once everything's done. So with that bottom cut, it was time to set up my sawhorses, and I did not get super crazy with this because this is not a... Um, an assembly table. It's not going to be used to build furniture. It's basically a, a table for computers. So as long as it's as square and as flat as any tabletop you can find in the store, it's going to be fine. So I saved some time in setting up some of these. And basically I just set up two saw horses with two two by sixes across the top. If this was going to be an exact torsion box, you would spend the time to joint these and get them perfectly flat and level them out. I just got it so that these are level parallel to each other as well as perpendicular to each other and now I can lay my top on there and start building my grid system. So with the bottom on that setup I'm going to spend the time to just re-level in a couple spots and make sure it stayed flat. So in order to make my grid system, I bought MDF, it's going to be three quarter is going to be the outside and then a half inch is going to be the inside grid. The three quarter I buy in the sections, you can get eight foot sections by like 12 inches, they're meant for shelves and I buy those just because I don't need a full four by eight sheet and it's easier to have it that size to cut down in my shop because it's so small. Now the entire frame is going to be three quarters, but the sides are actually going to be two and a half. And the reason I did that is because, which means I'll have to laminate some of this three quarter MDF, is because the final dimension is 101 inches, which is about 8.4 feet. Which means in order to set up this grid by using eight foot pieces of MDF, it's just much easier to make thicker sides instead of putting two pieces for each of these. Now the back is going to have slots to allow for power cords to come through and those are going to be an inch thick which means the back will be two sheets of MDF and then certain sections will be left out of it. So if you weren't doing any of this you could just build a three quarter inch frame the size you want and put it on your base but mine gets a little difficult with these slots and with the length. Final thickness for this entire box is going to be four inches, but my bottom's already half inch and the top's going to be three quarters. So that's already minus an inch and a quarter, which means all of my slats and my sides are going to be cut at two and three quarters to get me that four inch thickness. one of those pieces of MDF that I just ripped down my table saw and clamped it in place on the back of my table. And one of the, something I learned was this is these are actually 97 inches long which is perfect because that means I won't have to make my sides as thick as I thought. Then I went through and mapped out the three sections that will be removed for the plugs and they're basically an inch and a half by six inches and there's three of them spaced equally on the back of the tabletop. I clamp this in place so that it won't move and now I'm going to go through and take a three quarter inch section and a half inch section and cut each section and then glue all three of these together. In order to expedite the process of cutting these spacers for the back of the table I'm going to put some glue on them and attach them with some brads just to make it so I only have to make one cut for each and they'll stay more square and lined up if they're one piece.
So with all those pieces cut, I can now glue the chunks to the three quarters, and then I'm gonna countersink some screws into all the pieces. With that back set up, I was able to then measure and cut my sides. Um, one side I got away with using two of those three quarter inch pieces. On the other side I had to use three. And this is, you know, it's just going to add a little bit of weight to the structure, but the corners will be super strong. Also, and I knew I was going to do this, but since I was um, kind of dry thinning this together, I cut another half inch piece of wood to extend, because this is a... 4x8 sheet of plywood so it only went 90 inches and I had to get to that 103 so there will be one added section on the end. Now I haven't attached these yet but I'm going to do it the same way I did the ones in the back by adding glue and then some screws. But Once that's done, if this was a normal size table with the four sides that were just three quarters, you would just go around and square up the corners and put some brads in there to hold it in place because once you add the grid system in the top and bottom, that's what makes it secure. Um, since there's varying thicknesses on all of these, I took some scrap and made some five, a little less than five inch 45 blocks for the corners, which will just reinforce the corners while I'm adding the grid system to it. So I'm going to screw these together and then screw the whole frame together. So I have two and a half inch finishing nails in my finishing gun. And I'm basically just going to go to all the corners and tack everything in place with the finishing nails and glue and then go through and countersink some holes and reinforce everything with screws. Before I started cutting my grid, I switched out the bottom with the scrap piece of MDF I had. I actually bought a, uh, a couple of sheets for this, and there's enough to be able to use that as the bottom. Which would be good, because if some glue gets on it, I won't really care. And then obviously, once you put the grid on, I could put the top, uh, the bottom I cut for it on there and attach it without having to switch it out once the grid's in place. So you also might notice I took out those four 45 degrees I had in the corner and that was because since it's such a long span the MDF was bowing out on both sides and those corners were making it so I couldn't put it back into place for cutting the grid. So once the grid's in place I might add those corners back in if I need them I might not. I haven't decided yet. But now all of that's in place I could start cutting my grid. And it's going to be a four inch, a five inch spaced grid, which means for the long pieces, I'll need five of them to cut up the space. And then for the shorter pieces, since it's a hundred, about a hundred inches, divide that by five, I'm going to need about 20. So I set my fence back up to that two and what was it? Three quarters. So I set my fence back up to that two and three quarters and I'm just going to start ripping strips of half inch MDF to start making this grid. I got the five strips that go inside this box and since I made this the same length as the sheet of that MDF I didn't have to trim that at all and they fit in there just about perfectly. So now I'm gonna, I had, I ripped like eight extra sheets of this and um, now I'm gonna cut them to width and the width is gonna be 26 and an eighth. So, and I'm gonna make 20 of those. So I set up a stop on my radial arm saw and with this extra stack I just cut, I'm just gonna start cross cutting a ton of these down.
To arrange this web inside of that box, I'm going to be cutting lap joints into all of my pieces set up on a 5 inch grid. And that might sound tedious, but the other way to do this is to cut all your pieces to exact size and then butt joint them together with glue and add brads at one end. So you would add brads at one end and then tow it in on the other side because you would have a piece coming here as well. Um, I don't love butt joints, I avoid them at all costs. And once you make the jig for these lap joints, it's just a matter of running every single piece through it and then it gives you a much stronger finished project product. So in order to make the jig for this, I've already I already have made these, so I had this jig ready. I just use a scrap piece of poplar and I ran I put my half inch dado stack in my table saw and I clamped this piece of poplar to my miter gauge and ran it through. Then I marked five inches over and ran it through again. Then I took a piece of this half inch stock and glued a little nub in that second slot and put some brads in there. Then you realign this back up with your dado stack and clamp it back to your miter gauge. So as I was clamping this on I realized I'm going to have to make a couple adjustments because the pieces for this torsion box are much bigger than the last one I made and this is going to hit my clamps. But after I make that adjustment, using this is very simple. I'm going to just take all my pieces, ride them up against this nub, rub them through, and then keep on moving them over. So the quick fix I had for adjusting this jig was I have a finger jointing jig that I use and I already had made and I just attached. I ended up cutting an extra dado in here to allow for my finger joint jointing guide pin to stick out and then I just attached it to the front of this jig and then attach that jig to my miter gauge. So if you're building one of these from scratch you could build it with more of a higher base and these two braces that will hold it so you can attach it to your miter gauge. Now everyone gauge is a little bit different. Some people you could screw stuff right into it and you don't have to worry about clamps but mine you can't. So once that's lined back up now and clamped in place I can start cutting all these laps. I have some cutoffs from this project and I marked halfway on this cutoff and then raised my blade to cut that. And I'm going to run two through just to make sure that they're flush once everything's been cut. So with those laps cut, you could slide this into place and you could see it's a nice tight fit. It's going to be flush. It's flush and it's going to be stronger than any butt joint you can make. So now that I have my blade raised and my fence and everything sh uh, set up, I'm just going to start taking all of my pieces and running them through. That's what the box looks like with all of those notches cut for the lengths and at the end the last piece was so close to the end that I decided just not to include it. It's not going to make any difference adding that strip that close to that thick edge. So now that I have all those cut I'm going to do the exact same thing for all of the widths and I can start putting them in place. For my whisk, it turned out that 5 inch spacing was almost perfect. And that means I only needed 4 notches. So I'm going to take one of these out and just do the 4.
So I don't actually know if any of this made it into the video because I haven't checked the footage yet, but late yesterday when I applied glue to all the edges of this and then put it inside the box and started to attach all the edges to the edge of the box, the whole thing started lifting up where I had already put the screws. And um, I have seen YouTube videos of people assembling these before and this seems to be a very common problem. So instead of messing with it yesterday because daylight savings was on Sunday and it gets um, dark earlier now, I just, just decided to take it out of the box and start fresh today. And my approach today is going to be um, instead of attaching it to the sides first, I'm going to put it in the box and glue the bottom onto the grid and then into that bottom and then trying to attach it to the sides and see how that goes. Um, today, of course, Murphy's Law, it is probably 15 degrees or so cooler than it was yesterday, so my glue is going to dry super slowly. It's actually only just warm enough to be using glue, so I'm just going to kind of see how this whole thing goes. So now that I have my top on, I'm going to go along the sides and the ends and mark where all of my grids meet and then transfer those marks to the top. With all those lines in place, now I'm going to clamp the surfaces together so they can't move and rise on me and probably weed it with some cinder blocks and then start countersinking and putting in some inch and a quarter screws to make sure that this thing can't move. So I'm not going to film me putting all these screws in because it's going to be a ton of screws, but I'm basically going to go around and add screws on all of these lines. It's a lot of screws and I've seen people do it with brads, but the brads for me, this is so big, they were just pulling out as I was going. So I'm going to put all these screws in. I'm going to avoid screwing in the sides because those still need to be pushed in a little bit. So I'll wait to flip it before I screw those. And I'm just going to be checking down at eye line with where the plywood meets the MDF every once in a while to make sure that nothing's rising. You can see I ended up putting a screw on just about every single line of every box. And that was probably a little bit excessive, I'll admit it, but it was more so for peace of mind versus necessity. And you could see on the sight line that that box stayed completely flush. So ideally I would let this set up now with all the weight on there and allow the glue to dry before I flip it, but these sides need to be attached because they bow because they're so long on each side. So I'm going to have to flip this and clamp the sides together and screw all those in So before the glue sets up. So hopefully when I take all this weight off, everything will stay just the way it is. those clamps in place pulling the two sides together I can now go in through the sides and put all those screws I took out from yesterday back in and this seemed to work out pretty well there's some spots in the boxes where the screws miss the half inch MDF because it is rather skinny but once it's together I could go on the underside and fix all those spots With those edges attached on from the sides now, what I'm going to do is slide this off 
my plywood and put some screws up to the bottom into these sides since I didn't do it on the other side. And then I'll probably trim the edges and then that will be it for this video. So as soon as I shut off that last video, it started raining, so I had to rush and throw everything in here. And now what I'm going to do is I put a trim bit in my router, and I'm just going to trim the outside of that piece of plywood. And the bearing's going to ride on the side so that it makes a nice flush cut. The nice thing about that trim bit is it's cut out those notches that I made for the cables on the table.